one of the benefits of the practice, the Buddha said, is that we get to the point where we think the thoughts we want to think and don't think the thoughts we don't want to think. If we haven't trained the mind, our thoughts take over. They're in charge of us. Part of it is because we're interested in every thought that comes into the mind. And so we practice meditation to learn how to turn them off. That's what the concentration is for. You bring the thoughts to one topic, which is the breath, and let all your other thoughts go. At the same time, you have to learn how to think thoughts that are worth thinking. Because just because you want to think a thought or don't want to think a thought doesn't mean that the ones you want to think are good thoughts and the ones you don't want to think are bad thoughts. You've got to learn how to, what kind of not thinking is good, what kind of thinking is good, how to go about it. And this you learn from trial and error. As the Buddha said, you divide your thoughts into two types, those that would lead to suffering and those that lead away. The first are based on sensuality, harmfulness, ill will. Those are the thoughts you have to learn how not to think. Then there are thoughts that are based on renunciation, goodwill, basically, and compassion. Those are thoughts that are good to think, but even they have their time and place. So you look at the results of the thinking, not just where they come from. And you see that some thoughts help to still the mind, other thoughts lift the quality of the mind as it's still. And then there are thoughts that release the mind. Those are the kinds of thoughts that are worth thinking. So right now what kind of thinking would lift the quality of their stillness of mind so that it's solid? And if there's any thoughts that come up that would be unskillful or pull you down, okay, release yourself from them. Learn to remind yourself that just because a thought comes into your mind doesn't mean that it's your thought. Remember John Lee's image of all the, the worms and parasites going through your blood. And a worm may have gone through your, through your brain and left a thought. A parasite may have gone through and left a thought, not necessarily in your interest. That rule that Achan Mun had about his visions. It didn't matter where it came from. The question was, if you followed it, where would it lead? Well, that applies to your thoughts as well. Just because something comes up in your brain doesn't mean that it's something you have to follow or you have to identify with. So learn how to sort out your thoughts. And getting the mind settled with the breath is a good place to sort them out. There's a tendency sometimes that once the mind does settle down, it's really still right here. You want to stay with the stillness, which is okay as long as the mind needs to rest. But you remember that stillness on its own is not going to do all the work. You can't just keep running, running away from your thoughts. You have to turn around and face them and figure out which ones that really are worth holding on to, which ones are worth putting out to pasture, which ones you want to nourish. And that way you not only learn to think the thoughts you want to think and not think the thoughts you don't want to think, but you learn how to think thoughts that are worth thinking and drop all the ones that are not. That's when this skill gets really useful.